Yep. All right. Let's get going. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the A Sun Show, uh, season three, episode three. Um, still the longest running, uninterrupted, bi weekly show that plays with more frequency than the late night show. Let it be known. Um, yeah. So let's get right into it. We're start- just starting our second week of conference play. Um, that's pretty interesting games finish up last week. Some pretty uh, high profile games that turned out to shape up uh, conference play and some other big ones that some have already finished and some are already underway. Um, I'll get into the last week's games at first and then um, uh, I'll get into the, this week's games that way. Um, well, I guess we can start. Uh, FAMU and um, Jack, you got a big first conference win over them, um, two of the presumed uh, contenders in the conference, especially in this um, Did you want you know, talk on that win a little bit, touch on Yeah. So, uh, opened up with a uh, kick, uh, turn, return to open kickoff touchdown, which definitely helped in the end. Uh, but got a couple lucky breaks, and the decision to go for a field goal at halftime proved to be the deciding one so uh yeah the 24 21 win uh oh, good yeah. win for me to get going conference play um next we had savannah state and kennesaw defensive struggle Uh, it's nice to see that we have a defensive stall in the conference with Baba. Um, Sanford's blowing out Alabama State 42-14. to 14. Um, They continue their, their hot streak in conference play. Um, Bethune-Cookman 38-17 over Chattanooga. Chattanooga still trying to turn the corner uh, so far this year. Has not caught a win yet, but, uh, you know, it's another week, and there's still actually – that's not too bad. I never – uh, kind of um, starting a little bit of a tough part of their schedule with the Bethune Cookman and Jacksonville State back to back. Wishing them the best, <laughs> the best of luck. <laughs> That's what that. Yeah. Um, Campbell and Mercer, Uncle Rico. That game was actually close, uh, closer than the score actually indicates. Um, it was pretty close up in the in, in the first half for sure. It was a low scoring game, um, and then Campbell kind of broke it open in the second half in the fourth quarter, particularly with a couple of um, long drives that kind of sealed the deal. And in um, Rico time, um, my game Alabama A&M versus Jacksonville. Um, this is one of the more uh, stressful games I've ever played. Uh, I won 22-21, and the game actually came down to the special teams. Out of all things, um, I accidentally blocked a extra point return over two points, and then Jacksonville missed two critical field goals in the fourth quarter that would have put him up, um, and ended up being a pretty much back and forth game that uh, ended on him missing a field goal at the end of the game, which was <laughs> keeping me out that night. Yeah. Um, and then uh, North Dakota State and Stetson. Uh, Stetson had a very interesting week, and we'll get to that later in the show. Um, but uh, originally scheduled to put slated to play East Tennessee State. Uh, something kind of that kind of fell through with a couple of uh, you know uh, technical uh, rules that apply to um, the game. So they're playing North Dakota State in our conference week. Um, we'll, we'll we'll talk to more about the game later, but um, final score is fourteen zero there. Um, do you want to get into this week's games? Yeah, so we start off with the game of the week, which is Savannah versus Mercer, Savannah State versus Mercer. Um, that game has yet to kick off, but it should be a good one. Uh, a game that can decide the Georgia belt already in week four. Um, we then we then have Samford versus uh, Eastern Tennessee, which is uh, at seven seven with four minutes four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Uh, but uh, Samford, a uh, good back to back win, trying to keep it going while Eastern Tennessee still. We then have Stetson versus Jacksonville, which is the other game yet to kick off this week. Um, Stetson trying to redeem themselves from the what happened last week, and Jacksonville also trying to get their first win of the year. Licking their wounds a little bit. Yeah. 
And then we have Jacksonville State versus Chattanooga, which Jacksonville State is up 10 nothing with a minute left in the first. Uh, so Jacksonville State trying to rebound from the close. And Chattanooga trying to get over that blowout from Bethune Cookman. Uh, then we have your game, which is uh, Alabama A&M versus Campbell. Um, that one is only two minutes in. Do you have anything you want? How's it going so far? It's good. I'm out playing for my life here. If I win, I'm legally kicked out of the conference. So, um, you know, I got a, got a kind of a prisoner's dilemma here. But um, mm. besides from that, it's all going, going, going swell. Then we have the one game that's finished this week, which is uh, Kennesaw versus me or A&M. Um, that game ended 48-41 Kennesaw. Um, couple failed drives and uh, bad turnover. Uh, just I didn't ha- uh, I couldn't pull it out. Uh, plus me forgetting to do hurry up on a field goal so that I could try an onside kick. Uh, so, and then finally. Last game is Alabama State versus Bethune Cookman, which is 30 seconds in right now. Uh, Bethune Cookman, last undefeated team left in the conference. To win this, unanimous number one for rankings, plus um, just starting off better than everybody else and getting a bit of a cushion. Um, and Alabama State. Um, lost last week trying to get back, um, get over that blowout they suffered from Sam. Yeah, uh, that's, that's... and that uh, that you know, that puts them that puts them back already in the Alabama belt. Um, as of right now, it, it, it's interesting to kind of see how these belts kind of play out based on how the schedule turns out. The Georgia belt could be decided this week. Uh, Savannah State, uh, Baba could. If Baba beats Mercer, um, he will win the Georgia belt by week four, uh, which is interesting um, considering, you know, Kennesaw's big win this week. And, um, you know, the other, I mean, Florida belt hasn't even really started yet. So it's interesting kind of see how those scheduling changes can determine um, who wins when. Um, Sanford got the win last week, so they haven't really leaned on the Alabama belt. And then I, I think that's the only, those are the only two games as the only game this week that uh, has any sort of belt on the line or belt determination. Um, yeah, so let's get into the rankings. Um, yeah. You can start with yours. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll start with the official real quick. Okay. Uh, so in this week's rankings, uh, uh, I moved up two spots from three to one, and Jacksonville State dropped two from one to three, while well, Bethune stayed at two. Um, both Campbell and Samford made jumps. Campbell two spots up and Samford three to get up to four and five. Uh, Stetson fell a couple spots down to six. And, um, Mercer jumped up a couple spots. Uh, Savannah State made a big jump, go, uh, jumping up to eight. Um, and Kennesaw made a, uh, Drop some going down three spots. Um, uh, everybody else, Bethune Cookman was the only one to keep their spot. Everybody else moved a little bit, but not much. So, um, so the top three were exactly the same uh, Ford AM, Bethune Cookman, Jacksonville State. Uh, I still had Stetson at four and Mercer at five. Than Campbell and Samford. Um, I still had Alabama A and M over Savannah State, and uh, I had Kennesaw as the best winless team at the time of ranking them. With, uh, and yeah, that's the big big differences between mine and the official. Mine's a, mine definitely is a little bit different than it was last week. Mine last week was pretty much straight chalk. This week, um, 
the top four are the same, top five, and then I got Stetson and Mercer flipped. Um, I had Stetson at seven, Mercer at six, and then I had myself at eight, Baba at nine. Um, you know, no hate there. I just uh, got to represent my hometown team. And then I also had Kennesaw State at 10, and or, sorry, Kennesaw State at 11, Jacksonville at 12. Um, so just, you know, a couple of things flipped here and there. I think for me, the most interesting – the most interesting part of the race right now is that, um, you know, three through seven right now. Well, I guess really more is four through seven with Campbell, Sanford, Stetson, and Mercer. Um, you know, those are four, I think, four popular picks for, um, you know, possible peak dark horses to, to make to the Conference Championship game. And I really want to see how those four games kind of turn out so far. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Moving forward, you know. I know those top. I know those top seven all have the capacity to make it in. Uh, a couple games here and there, the head-to-head games, and maybe a game on the side that just went wrong is going to decide it. And it's interesting, uh, you know, Campbell got a kind of win over Mercer last week, but division games haven't started yet. So, you know, who knows how important that game will prove to be, you know, come week 10, 11, 12, when um, belts are decided and, you know, that could – I very well could be the, the win that, that decides the form. So I'm interested to kind of see see who makes it out of that, that little gauntlet of four, four teams. Um, yeah, so I guess we can get into um, our new our new bit, um, the Sunny D yeah. <laughs> defense of the week. Um, for those of you who don't are familiar with the with the idea, it was kind of brought up last week, and we decided to run with it and. This, uh, you know, this kind of award, for lack of a better term, or highlight, I guess, um, points out a, a defense that was really, really good last week. Um, and this first Sunny D glass of OJ goes to Savannah State. Um, Baba held uh, Kennesaw State to 10 points, so the least points in the um, conference, lowest yards, and really uh, worked the clock, dominated the time of possession. Um, so he kind of used offense as his one of his better weapons with the option. I know he, he likes to uh, <laughs> chew the clock all the time. So that ended up proving to be um, you know, really helpful and, and got him that big piping glass of OJ. So congrats, uh, Baba. Okay. And before we start the Shiner Shade, we're going to bring on Stetson as a guest. Stetson? Or, Are you, yeah. you able to? He's already unmuted. Should be. <laughs> oh, it has been unmuted on mine. Technical error. Uh, <laughs> he dips. He's like. Hi, I'm out. Yeah. I'm about to head out. Hmm. How about now? There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about y'all? Let's get into the shiner shade. Uh, so first one, uh, I'll throw this over to Stetson first. Do you think uh, Kennesaw finishes above five hundred in conference play? Uh, um, I'm gonna put shade on that one. I think uh, the Atlantic Sun from top to bottom is relatively deep. Uh, Kennesaw State has a relatively tough schedule at the end of the year. Uh, they still play Stetson, Bethune Cookman, Mercer. Those are three teams that, um, well, I and Mercer are not ranked right now. Those are all three teams that have shown they're good. And Kennesaw State is off to um, not a great start. So um, it's going to be very hard for Kennesaw State to finish above 500. What do you think, Gary? You know, I I would have agreed with you uh, about 
six hours again. Um, but I mean, I think, I think if today is, you know, any indication, um, it's that, you know, the ASUN is representative to me of the SEC kind of real life. Any team can beat really anybody any week, it seems like so far. So I think, I mean, I think if he wins the games that he's supposed to win and he, you know, he, he shocks the world and a couple other ones, I think he definitely could finish above 500. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely think it's, I'm going to shine it. I'm going to shine it. I mean, for me, this is a tough one. I kind of want to shine it just because he beat me. Um, <laughs> uh, given that respect that uh, he deserves. Put some respect uh, on his name. Yeah. Uh, All right. Um, I will I think, this next yeah, one. I'll shine it, Keith. I think he'll finish above five. I think he can do it. Okay. Um, I'll take this next one, um, and I'll ask you, Slolo, um, Shine okay. or Shade. Um, all three teams in the Georgia Bell finish in the top eight in the final conference rankings. So that Samford, Savannah State, and Mercer. Uh, it's going to be uh, Kennesaw State. Oh, uh, Kennesaw. Savannah yeah, State. sorry. Yep, and, and Mercer. Uh, so, top eight for all three is Kennesaw, Savannah, and Mercer. Um, well, if I think Kennesaw is going to be above 500 in conference play, I think it's very likely he gets in the top eight. Okay. Uh, Stanford, I think he's going to stay there throughout the, well they're gonna stay there throughout the whole rest of the season. Um I think about the shade I'm not sure Savannah I'm not sure Bob is going um get in there. He might he might be nine or ten, but I don't think top eight. What about you Steph? What do you think? I'm going to shade it as well. Uh, the way I see it, um, there are three teams that I would be absolutely shocked if they don't finish top eight, and that is uh, Jacksonville State, Florida A&M, A &M, and Bethany Cookman. And one team that I don't think has any chance to finish top eight, and that's Chattanooga. Um, so that leaves uh, five spots that those three teams have to fit in. And I think that there's a number of other solid teams like Campbell, like myself, like um, uh, Mercer. Savannah State that will take some of those spots. And I think that they'll all be good, but that one or two of them will end up in that nine to 10 range. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I agree with you on, on some of that. I, I think I think Bob is the wild card. I think Mercer I think Mercer will stick around. I think Mercer Mercer is gonna finish you know steady in there in the top eight. I think I think um, Kennesaw State will sneak in. Um, and Baba to me is a wild card. I, I feel like he could he could finish, you know, he could just take off um, and, and finish, you know, somewhere in five or six, but he also could not. So, you know, I'm interested to kind of see how that goes, but um, I think I actually I might shade it. I might shade it. There's a lot. I I think we're still a top heavy conference, but I, I think we run deep. So, um, but I don't know. I, I I don't think I don't know how how Baba shakes out for the rest of the season. Um, and then I'll take this last one too. Um, and I guess this. Uh, what do you say? Oh, I don't. I don't do the last one. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. All right, so, Stetson, do you think Jacksonville's going to get a win in the Florida belt? belt? So, Jacksonville would have to beat me, you, or Bethune Cookman. Do you think they're going to do that? Get one win. Uh, I'm going to shine that um, the way that our league is set up. Um, if a opponent is not really really bad then there's some luck that goes into it and since jacksonville is a competent team if not all that great um i think that they have a decent shot to uh pull out a win against um one of the three of us even if i wouldn't say they're the favorite in any of those three games yeah i don't take the same logic it if you look at all three at the same time it's like he there's a good chance he wins one, though, if game by game, he 
I don't think he went to that one. I don't think he. Um, so, I think it's pretty likely he'll get one. I don't know which one. Hopefully not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll see. I I will shine it. Yeah, he's played me this game, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, you could shine it in week. I don't think <laughs> he could. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna. Sh- I think I'm actually gonna shade that. Um, I I think the four belt is is one of is probably in my mind probably the best um, belt in the entire conference. Um, I just think, and I'm, this is no, you know, shade on Jacksonville. I, I played a very hard fought game with them last week. Um, but I think, you know, you got three solid contenders in that division or in that belt. Um, so I'm, I'm going to shade it. And um, I hope it proves me otherwise. I, I, want, I really want to see. Uh, I like the parity I've seen so far. So, but I'm going to shade it for now. Okay. Uh, real quick, we got some shiner shades in the chat. So, um, Kansas State loses two more. the game clock. Within the last minute, he loses two more games. Do you think that's going to happen this season? I'm, uh, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say... I think that I think that this game is a little bit more momentum-based than people would like to admit, and I feel like, you know, he kind of turned a bit of a corner. Um, and, I, and then I was going to say I think he's going to win the rest of his games. I think it's just not going to be as close at the end. I think he's going to win his games. I think he's going to lose his games, you know? Um, but I think, I think those like tight last minute games are, you know, you, he's going to refine his craft in the in the coming games. Um, oh, said. Yeah. I'm going to shade that as well. Um, simply because it's relatively rare for a game to come down to the wire like that. And for him to have two yeah. more of those yeah, games, in only nine more weeks of play, um, it's just statistically unlikely. I think I'll shade it as well. I, don't, I think it, he's figured out how to close. He's started to figure out how to close games, and I don't think those things will happen again, and he'll be able to. Uh, okay. So how about the North Division... Out of conference wins are better than the South. Shiners. I gotta, I gotta pull up the, the schedule real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same. Let me. Did, didn't Campbell get a win over Penn? So that was a good one. Uh, I think you know it's uh, it's tough. I mean, look at yeah. Speed. I think I'd shine it. Oh no, Penn beat Campbell. Never mind. Uh, I think I'd shine it. I don't think like I've beaten Furman and Grambling State, so the rest of my games are harder than that. But uh, Jacksonville State is in the North. Beat Montana yeah, State. Yeah, good... and oh, and then they beat they beat Penn there. So those or are Princeton. two yeah, yeah. big ones. Uh, I think I'm going to um, shine that as well with um, the redaction that I think that um, week five, that could definitely flip. Um, two teams from the South are playing top 10 ranked teams in week five. I'm playing um, Incarnate Word and um, Bethune Cookman is playing Chase. Oh. Um one of those might be week eight, but the South has some really high end um out of conference games during the rest of the year scheduled. And off the top of my head, I can't think of any uh top ten teams that any North Conference um team plays. So if one of the two of us pulls off a win against those top end opponents, um I think that uh, the strength of schedule could switch. Uh, let's see. How about A Sun finishes with five ranked teams? So, and... 
whichever one, whichever one you want to cite. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, the teams right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, shine that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna shine that. Um, I think. You, I think at the end of the day, we have, I mean, teams that solidly could win it, like you said, sets in those three, Jacksonville State, um, FAMU, Bethune-Cookman, those teams can all finish within the top six by the end of the season. I think Campbell, Campbell stay in the top uh, 20. And then I think a team like Mercer or like Stetson or Sanford will stick around and finish in the, within the top 25 and make it into the playoffs, I think. And I, you know, I'd be, I'd feel good about, you know, any of those teams representing the A7 in the playoffs. So I think that um, I think we have enough, you know, fringe top twenty-five teams that I can I can confidently say I think we can finish the five. I'll shine that. Yeah, I will shine it as well. I think Bethune Cookman and FAMU, barring a collapse, have shown enough that they'll probably finish uh, top twenty-five as well as Jacksonville State. So those are three teams I think will all finish top twenty-five. Uh, Campbell has a few wins, a few games left on its schedule that it should win, and it has so much name recognition that it might not have to be quite as good as most teams to make top 25. And then there's other teams like me, like Mercer, like Samford, who have gotten off to decent starts, who if any of us go on this streak, uh, we could also end up ranked. So there's enough good teams in the conference. I think we we'll probably end up with five and even have an outside shot to have six ranked at the end of the year, depending on how some of those tougher out-of-conference games go. Yeah. Let's do, uh, let's do one more and then we can get into the, um, the interview. Ask a couple questions. Um, this last one, Shine or Shade from, from, from Sanford. Uh, Stetson versus Sanford in the A-Sun Championship to decide the rivalry. Shine or shade? <laughs> uh, as much as I hate admitting this, I'm going to shade it, mostly because uh, I already now have a uh, conference loss, and I am in, in my opinion, the far tougher half of the A-Sun. Uh, Bethune Cookman and FAMU both look like top 10 teams to me. Uh, Jacksonville is in the pushover. Kennesaw State is good. And Mercer is um, looking really good so far this year. Um, I'm not real familiar with Alabama State, but none of the other teams in the South are teams that I want to play. Um, so I don't think I can make the conference championship game far in chaos. Um, and as for Samford, I think Jacksonville State right now has... Um, a good shot to make the championship game as well as um, Campbell. So I think Samford is at about a one third chance to make it. And I'm at about a 10% chance. So I don't like those odds. <laughs> that would be amazing. If that was, <laughs> I ended up being the conference championship game. Um... It would be, it would be spectacular, but I don't think we're playing until next year, unfortunately. <laughs> I will have to shade it as well. I still have me versus Jacksonville State in the conference final, in the conference championship game. Uh, and well, I don't. I think both of you have pretty good shots at making it. I don't think it's the best shot, and both of you at the same time um, would be a surprise to me. Yeah, I do have to say that if we meet in the cha conference championship game, I think that that means that week 12 was absolutely spectacular because that week Stanford will be playing Jacksonville State, who I think are the two favorites in the North. Right. So that game would probably be to decide who goes to the championship game. And I play um, Bethune Cookman week 12. And if I'm making the championship game, that pro game is probably yeah. a win. -in. You played Bethune Cookman, so, yeah. Yeah, so those are two games that would probably uh, be two of the best couple games in the whole of FCS for that week, and they would both be happening in the A-Sun. So that would not only mean it would be an excellent conference championship game, it would also mean that the A-Sun would have two really spectacular games in week 12. Yeah. I'm going to – I think I might – 
I'm going to shade it just because I would love to see that happen. But I also know that if that, you know, like, you know, you bring up some good points that if it actually is Stetson and Sanford at the end of, you know, at the end of the conference championship game, right, you know, at a conference play, that means that Jackson, that means that a lot of teams actually had to stumble far, you know, in order, for, in order for that to kind of happen. So that really doesn't look, I mean, that means that we're probably there's less chance that we're gonna that we're gonna field a lot of teams in the playoff, you know. I don't think it has to. Stop. I think us, it, it could we could all like me and Bethune Cookman could be one game behind or something like that. Like he gets yeah. the tiebreaker over us. Right. Right. Um. Or yeah. Right. I play both FAMU and Bethune Cookman. If I manage to beat both of them, you um, then that could definitely have... put me in, even if we all tie. I still have the belt going to the conference championship. That so, if you can beat me, Anderson Cookman, that will buy us. Unless you, yeah. unless you stumble a couple times in your game, but generally it's looking like if yeah, I think the Horn Belt winner can very easily go to the conference championship game. Those are, I I mean, as I said, Bethune Cookman and FAMU look like the two best teams in the South. So. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, yeah, we can move we on. To... Go ahead. Go ahead. There's one more question I was wondering if you guys want to answer that real quick before. Oh yeah. Uh, so who do you guys think are in the A Sun? Uh, who are your predictions? Uh, A Sun championship. And has like, did you have a different opinion week one of conference play? Uh, did you think of someone else last week? Okay, so my predictions right now are Jacksonville State versus Bethune Cookman. Um, Bethune Cookman was my favorite the entire year. Uh, I've known their coach for uh, a little bit now, and he is good at both having relatively um, encompassing scouting and also not being a slave to that. And I think that makes for a really tough coach. And he's done nothing to change my opinion as he's won all his games and they've all been pretty convincing wins as well. Um, Jacksonville State was not my pick at the beginning of the year, but admittedly that was because they're they're a bit more quiet of a coach and I wasn't familiar with them. I thought that Campbell would uh, win the North um, because Campbell was a more active coach who was ranked in the preseason. But um, while I still think Camp was good, I no longer think it's um, a top-end team quite as much as a Jacksonville State is. I think that's spot on. I think that that's excellent analysis. Um, I think I have to go with the same. Um, I will say that, and I guess I no shade on this one, but I – I think after week one's games, or, or sorry, week, week three, first week, first play, I, I thought when FAMU beat Jacksonville State, I was like, okay, this, you know, this, like, I honestly thought that that was going to, that could be a match um, in the conference championship game. Now, it's the, the season is very young. Um, I, I don't think that's impossible, but I think if I, if the, if I had to choose right now who I thought was going to be, um, you know, BC versus Jacksonville. Okay, so let's move on to the interview, I guess. I think that's any final thoughts on what we've just talked about from either of you? No, that, that sounds okay. Um, so, uh, you. Uh, we already discussed you and lost last week, Stetson. Um, could you, you like to explain like the frustration of like having to restart and play a new opponent that last week and how, just how that went? Right. Yeah. So I was originally matched up against uh, East Tennessee State, and they, uh, their coach would play an offense, and then as soon as he lost possession of the ball, he would go silent until a delay of game hit. Uh, which was really frustrating because I was I had gotten a really good read on him and 
he gained, I think, three yards in the three drives he played. So I felt confident I could win that game, but in the end, we only had about a minute of game time. So um, I had to restart the game. Um, and I ended up playing North Dakota State, who wasn't all that fast themselves. And um, we only got through about a quarter of football. So um, I lost it. And it was, according to the rules, it was just kind of frustrating because I just barely didn't have enough time played uh, for the first game to be valid and then just barely had enough time for the second game to be valid, which took a game I felt confident that I would win into a loss. So does that does that get um, chalked up as a conference loss for you, or is that still considered an out-of-conference loss? I have no idea. I kind of assumed it was a conference loss, but I think um, Campbell or Baba would be able to confirm one way or another. Kenny says it's yeah. Conference. Yes, Kenny just said it counts as a conference loss. Oh, man. That's, That's tough. tough because, yeah. You know, it, yeah, especially since ETSU is one of the two worst teams in the conference, according to most people. So I was looking forward to that game as one of the two easy wins on my conference schedule. Yeah. Maybe, um, you know, you could touch a little bit on, and how, how was that transition? Did you have, did you, I mean, are you, are you much of a scouter? Do you, do you scout teams where you play? Or you, um, no. um, I don't scout before I play it beyond the very simplest of, I go to their old game thread and I lurk, and I see, do I see a ton of memes? Yes or no. And if that's all I do before a game starts, once a game starts, I have a Google sheet that I keep track of um, what all their numbers are, what the results are, what the diffs are, uh, what the deltas are, and how long it took the opponent to reply. Um, because that um, makes a difference, at least in my uh, experience. To be totally honest, um, once ETSU timed out and we started a new game, I was kind of frustrated with um, the whole process um, as those who are in the Atlantic Sun can testify to. I was complaining in there. Um, but because I was frustrated and because um, North Dakota State had lost, their first two games, I didn't take it as seriously as I should have, and I didn't scout for that game, which should have been obvious because I lost that game. Uh, so what is your outlook on this upcoming game? Like how, uh, how, does, how does it change? Like how, what's your goal and for the rest of the season after that? Uh, it doesn't change. My goal for the rest of the season is what it was for the entire year, um, and that's I had um, two goals. The first was um, to end the season ranked, which I definitely took a hit, but I won convincingly enough my first two games. I still think I have a solid shot at doing that, especially if I can beat one of the tough teams, one or two of the tough teams um, on the rest of my schedule. I have two top 10 teams still left to play. I'm another team in FAMU who I believe is top 15. Two? Uh, Me, but you... Oh, no, three top 10 teams in Incarnate Word, FAMU, and Bethune Cookman. So if I can beat two of those teams, that's an excellent win for me. I'm not going to be top 10 after, but right now I am. Well, right now, all three of those teams are top 10. Yeah. So I still have a good chance to end ranked, I think. And my other um, goal for the season was to make the playoff this year, which I also think I still have a decent shot at doing, but I'm far from a lock. So both of my goals stay the same. Um, and Jacksonville is a tough opponent, a good opponent, but not one good to the point where I think I have no shot to win. Um, I think that, yeah, I'm going to go and try and win, and I'm confident in my team.
Awesome. Yeah, that's what we like to hear, especially after the tough circumstances of last week. Um, this is a question that I've kind of you know, wrestled with. Uh, you know, I've only this is only my third or fourth week in the entire FCFB. Um, but how do you feel that momentum plays um, to your advantage or disadvantage? In this game, I, I've heard, I've talked to Keo and a couple other people about it who are in Nason, but um, how do you kind of feel that that plays? Do you think it's a thing, or do you think it's more of of you know the right. game is still at, at, at its very core a random game and momentum isn't really much of a factor? Uh, so as far as week by week goes, which isn't really the heart of your question, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, as far as week by week goes, I think um, momentum plays a relatively significant role. Like, um, as I said, I was so frustrated by the way ETSU um, ended that I didn't put as much effort into the NDSU game as I normally would, and it showed up in the results. So um, now I go through the mental toughness of saying, okay, that was a really weird week. Instead of coming from a place where I'm saying I'm coming off a loss to an opponent who was 0-2 at the time, I have to say that game um while it's official is not typical and i should look at it as though it didn't happen and start over um as far as within a game i think momentum uh differs based on what opponent you're playing there are some opponents who will stick very strictly to um scouting or a list of numbers that they started at the beginning of the game and at that point momentum doesn't play much of a factor at all because they're looking at numbers uh, not playing based on the feel. But if your opponent is playing based on the feel of the game, they're looking at you, you're going back and forth, momentum plays a huge factor. Um, in my second week, I jumped out to a giant lead, and then my opponent started to claw back, and while he was pulling back, I couldn't do anything about it. Now, I pulled the game out, and I scored, I think, three touchdowns late to win pretty convincingly, but there were three whole many games based on momentum that I could really notice. Um, and moment, if I have the momentum, I'm really hoping that the other team keeps submitting numbers that we can go back and forth. Because if the team opposing me doesn't submit a number for eight hours or 10 hours or 12 hours, then I really feel like it's almost like a soft reset on the momentum. Because now they're coming back into the game and they're not continuing from the state of mind that they were playing in and no longer have a psychological advantage. They're starting over. Um, and they might, I might still have a little bit of the momentum, but I don't have most of it. So I'm willing to admit that there's been times where I won't wait eight or 10 hours because that's just frustrating for the opponent. But if I have a bad stretch of plays, I might see that I have to submit a play and wait 60 or 90 minutes just to give myself a chance to refresh and to sort of get out of the state of mind that I was stuck in. Because sometimes if I'm doing badly or doing really well, I'll get stuck in a rut of numbers or I'll get stuck in a pattern or my opponent will do the same. And that's not helpful for me, but it's really helpful when my, I can get my opponent doing that. Because then I can manipulate that and use that and rip off consecutive chunks of big yardage or consecutive stops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. I think momentum works about the same. Like it, it like in between games. Like when you're starting a new game, momentum doesn't really matter. Like it's like for me, it's two weeks before I play my next game. Like there's so much time in between that it like. There was two weeks coming into this last game. I had gone three and zero and beat the a top five team, and then I come out and lose this one. Like the momentum didn't help me there. Like it's in between weeks, just because of time, there's not really much momentum. But in game, like if you're submitting, if you're playing like two quarters in an hour, like there's definitely momentum in that. Like just if you can get your play opponent into a Definitely helps. Yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree with everything that you guys said. That is, uh, well, I think, but as much, I, I think, when, especially when I started the first two weeks out of conference, I was like, oh, wow, this is, 
you know, it makes you think that you're so excited to play. It makes you think that the players you're playing are really, really, really good when in reality, like, you're actually just kind of getting in your own head sometimes. Um, so, I uh, yeah. definitely agree that it does it does play some part. In inner, inner, inner week, it's kind of hit or miss depending on how quickly you end your game and, and you know, other, other, you know, deciding factors. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all I had. Do you have anything else, Lola? Um, I don't have any more. Um, do you have any closing thoughts? Like anything you think we should have asked you that you have thoughts about? Um, my only uh thing is actually a question for you guys, and that's a shiner shade. I was hoping that you would get to. Um, and that is who you think will finish last in the Atlantic Sun. I'm looking at this week 12 matchup between uh, Chattanooga and ETSU, who have probably been the two least impressive teams to date. And they play each other week 12. So that's probably the deciding matchup, but I want to get your opinion on that. Um... I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go Eastern Tennessee right now. From how they play against you, I don't know if that's an outlier or if they're going to keep doing that. Um, but I think they've been last in like two out of four weeks, weeks or three out of four weeks. Last. And I think they'll probably stay there for most of the season. And be there at the end. I, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna say that Chattanooga actually finishes worse, strictly based on strength of schedule. Um, they guess still have to play. Or I guess they played Bethune Cookman. They play in Jacksonville State now. They have to play Campbell, Stetson, Sanford, and Baba. I think. Um, you know, to I just think that that schedule is a lot harder to overcome. You know, I think there's only. The schedules aren't that different, but I think Chattanooga is a little bit tougher. So I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take them based on strength of schedule that they probably they have less likely of a chance to win some of those games based on the strength of their opponent. Yeah, that's all I had then. Um, once we've gone over that. Thank you guys for having me on. Uh, it was a good time, and I appreciate it. Yeah, right, thank you for coming on. Glad to have you on, man. Glad to uh, get you as a as a guest on here. Um, but that's all I had. I guess we could wrap this up. Um, we can move this post party to general. But thank you guys for coming, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. Yeah. See you, guys. Bye. We're going to move over.